Hello and welcome to another video from Sandra at Sandra Stamp and Craft Studio. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a brand new fancy fold for me. It's a tuxedo fold card. I'm back to share with you the beautiful Christmas Gleaming Variety Bundle. Now normally with a bundle you would your stamps and a punch in a bundle or stamps and die in a bundle. With this variety bundle you're actually getting your stamps, two punches and all your beautiful copper foiled designer series papers with 10% off everything. So here is my tuxedo style card that we will be making today. It's called a tuxedo because these look like a man's tuxedo jacket. This is going to stand as a 3D card but it also folds totally flat to go in your envelope. Okay, so let's set that to one side and let's create. I always recommend when you're trying something for the first time that you create yourself a template. So you can make one up in rough so you know how it's going to work. So here's one that I created earlier. The seam will unusually be at the front. Your adhesive will go on there and that will be your uh, tuxedo fold card. Okay, so I know what it's going to look like. So I'm now going to give you the measurements. So we need our paper trimmer. And bring that in sight of the camera and my card today measures 21 centimeters by 14.9 so that does mean you can get two of these out of one sheet of card so we're going to be starting by scoring this at 5 centimeters 10 centimeters 15 centimeters and 20 centimeters okay so first I will take my bone folder and I will burnish all of these score lines just helps to show up where all the folds are going to be okay and of course this piece here will be where the adhesive is is going now if you're going to make several of these you could actually use your template well, that's way over because of the piece on the side here and you could actually mark those mark those there so you could actually draw around that. That would be a really good use of a template. So I have a ruler and a pencil. I am working in centimetres. So I'm marking this at on the ruler from the top from 10 centimetres. I'm going to mark at 5 centimetres and the zero mark. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Now I need that to be on the actual, the edge, not the edge piece where the adhesive will go. I need that to be on the outside edge here. So that is on the zero and on the five. Okay, so we'll take this across. I'll leave that tucked under just for the time being. So with my ruler, I'm going to line up on the five centimeters down from the top on both sides. So that's there and there. I'm going to take my pencil from the first score line and draw out like so. Okay, now those lines need to be snipped. So we need to take out this piece at the top anyway. So I'll take my large scissors and snip along those lines. You're not taking it out, you're just snipping to the line. I do like to rub out my pencil lines now so they can't be seen. So take that one out and take this one out. Okay. So bringing back on my paper trimmer, I'm going to fold in the, both of these sides and we're going to cut from the center to this outside edge and the center to this outside edge. So I'm laying this with these edges tucked underneath. I'm laying this on my trimmer with the score line in the center on the cutting track and the point here on the cutting track. Okay, so I'll close that holding securely and I will cut that away. And then I'll turn it round and do exactly the same the other side. So we're working to the center point and to this point in here to be both be on the cutting track, holding very firmly and cutting that away. Okay, and that is the back of our card. Okay, 
So now we're going to open up and I will leave this piece on the end here tucked in. But now we're going to put those back on the track and we're going to continue that line. So this line is coming down here. So this line will be on the track there and on here for the next point. Okay. This is the easiest way that I've found to actually how this can work for us. And the same here, this line will continue. So this point is on the track and the, the pencil mark at the 10 centimeters is also on the track. So we've got those score lines in place. So again, I will rub out my pencil, pencil marks wherever they appear. So this point in here is also going to be snipped away. Okay. So the adhesive is going to be on this bottom section here. These sections that we've just scored are going to be folded back on themselves and made nice and neat with nice sharp creases. Okay, that's one side and then this is the other. Want to make sure it's nice and square at the edges and then fold that back. So there is our tuxedo style fold card. We have one set of designer series paper on here, one on the flaps and then one on the inside pieces here. So to do those we are going to cut some rectangles. So these rectangles will go on the inside here Okay, but we need to taper that down to the sides. The best way to do this is put the side that you want to be exposed facing each other. And if there's a one way design, like in the case of the baubles, you want to have the tops here. So I'm going to write so I know that that is the top. So we're going to take this from this point here out to four and a half centimeters down this side. So if I lay those together, we want to measure four and a half centimetres on this edge here. So four and a half, and then we'll put a mark. Okay. And we're going to take that up to that top corner. I use my small guillotine for this. Whenever you cut two layers together, it is very important to keep those held firmly together so that they don't slide and one is a different place to the other. So we're going to have it from the point here down to that four and a half centimeter mark. And that will be our two pieces. So we'll just bring those over and make sure they're going to fit in there okay. There's the inside of our card. Now for these two pieces on here, we need to cut a square that is four and a half centimeters square. The pieces we've taken off here are actually four and a half centimeters. So those layers could actually go on there. But I want to just point out to you, these are the waste pieces that we took from the top here. Okay, they just happen to be the correct size for us to put on here. Now the only thing is if you have a one-way design we've now turned them and so they're facing a different direction. Now if that was an all-over pattern that wouldn't matter but in this case I'm going to turn those over. So here are the two sections and I'm going to adhere those down on the corners there. Now that the inside panels are in, I'm going to adhere this on the front here. Some Tombow down there and seal that. 
I always like to press with the bone folder just to secure that and let the fibres knit. And there is our tuxedo fold. So for these sections here, again, I have cut some rectangles. These are four and a half centimetres by nine centimetres. And again, I will mark these, put the facing sides together. Again, if there's a one way design, make sure that the images are the right way up. Fold them together and then you will be measuring one side down to four and a half centimetres. So four and a half there and we're going to take it to this corner here. So just the same as before, make sure they are tightly together and the pencil mark and the corner are both lined up correctly on your trimmer. And of course these can be saved for another, another card. So these will now be adhered onto the front here. And there we have our three different types of paper and our box that's going to stand as a 3D card. Here I have a piece of the thick, very vanilla cardstock. Because the images are going to be standing alone, not as a matte layer, I like to have the thicker cardstock. So I have here one of the bauble images from the Christmas Gleaming stamp set. And I'm going to gently tap this on my pe pretty peacock ink pad and then stamp that firmly down there. Next I will have our old olive ink pad and I'll have the smaller bauble. I'll do the greeting in the old olive as well because that's the colour of my cardstock. So I'm going to pop this up the top here So I roughly cut away the greeting and then I have both the two punches. I'm going to use the small one first. With our Stampin' Up! punches we like to use mostly, most of the time they use from the reverse so that you can line up the image, hold it tightly and then squeeze that one out. And then we have the larger image. Again from the reverse, line it up nicely. in the center, hold it firmly and then punch it out. I like to use a larger pair of scissors and I will cut these just slightly larger than the image is. I love these block images. And they're easy to follow along the line and just cut in the heel here so you have a nice long cut if you use smaller scissors, you tend to go snip, 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 and you get a more jagged edge. So if you use, come right down the heel of the scissors, holding it steady, and then cut all the way through. Next, I'm gonna take my Wink of Stella glitter brush. I shake it up to make sure that all the pigment is mixed. And I just like to squeeze it slightly to make sure that there's some ink running down in the barrel, just so that the nib is moist. So what I'm going to do here, all of our inks are water-based. So I'm just picking up the colour from that water-based ink. Once it's reactivated with a wet surface, it will actually then be used as a diluted paint. So there's one done really, really quickly. And all I've done is just coloured that image in. Oops, bring that up to the camera if I can but that is all covered in glitter. I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up. There you can see the nice pastel color coloring in. And I hope you can see, you probably can't see on there. 
the shimmer. I'm going to do it with the other one as well and just pick up this colour. I like to start with the outside edge of the bauble first. Okay, so that's got some colour in there and then I will colour in the rest of it. And there is the second image. Probably won't pick up the shimmer. There is lots of shimmer in there. Okay, so while this, whilst those two are drying, I'm going to snip another couple of strips about the same size as the greeting there. So these strips have been folded in half. There's one. I wanted to do it on a hard surface so I can score it nicely. And then this one the same. Fold it in half and just burnish that with a bone folder. The next thing we're going to do, our greeting is going to be pivoted on a middle point. So we need to create a small hinge. So here's our sentiment. We need to mark the middle of this piece here. So I'll mark the centre where that's going to go. Now each of these want to be attached onto there. So they're a little bit on the long side. So I'm going to trim those down. A little bit shorter. And I'll do this one to the same length. So what we're doing is making two little hinges. Okay, so just snip those off. Now this is a bit unusual, you might not have seen this, this done before, but it's a nice way of a greeting being suspended. So I'm putting some adhesive just through the middle there and I'm going to put one of my hinges, it's folded in half. If I bring that screen into you, you can see where the dot is in the middle. You can see where my little hinge is and I've placed Tombow through, multi-purpose adhesive just through the middle there. And I'm going to place this on one half like so Okay, and then do the same on the other half. I'm going to have to put it down onto the table to press on it. So it wants to be in the centre and just press on it. And if we turn it round, we can do exactly the same on the other half. So we take our hinge, our folded hinge, and we're going to put, place that in the centre that way. Okay, and again, I like to press on this on a hard surface. Here is our hinge. So there's our greeting. And as I turn it over, you will see our two hinges. So we have one piece that comes down and along and one piece down and along there. So now when we bring our card back, we want that hinge to go on there, but we want it to be movable. So when the card is flat in an envelope, it will still be fine. So what I'm going to do now is get those out of the way. I'm going to glue this whole piece. So we will glue our hinges Okay, put some multi-purpose adhesive on there. I'm going to place this in the middle of this section and it will be flat. But it will be pivoting from where that centre point was. So just a quick check to make sure we've got it down. And there is, got some glue just seeped out. There we go. So there is my greeting but it's actually floating. Now I'll try and get that on the camera as best I can. Can you see how there's the hinge each side and there is the hinge each side and the greeting in the middle. And when we place that in an envelope flat, it will still be nice and flat for us. Okay, but there's just, just a little bit of a gap in there. That's probably the best view I can get. So the hinge is attached and the greeting is floating. So it's whether it's it's um, 3D or whether it's flat, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so I think we're there with that one. Now we need to put a couple of strips on the inside here as a little as a little hinge. So here I've cut the two pieces about eight centimeters with a one inch score on each end and made my two Zs like so. To get these down onto the card, we're going to put adhesive on there and then we're going to have adhesive on there. So that piece would move from that position 
from being flat to being 3D when the card is open. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So it's going to be kind of like so, and it will bounce up and give it dimension when you want it to. But then when it wants to be flat, the card will go flat and it will stay there. So I'm just going to pick these up. And I'm going to put some adhesive on here and on this tab. I think it's easier to apply if you actually think of it like that. It starts as a Z, so it's facing the same way, but we do need to have one on the top and one on the bottom. So I'm just going to, I can't see what I'm doing in there. So I'm going to put that one down and that one down. Just hope that they are flat. There we go. So it will bow. Once, once it's down, you need to let the glue set. I think it's easier. I'll show you when I've finished. So I'll bring that up to the camera and hopefully you'll be able to see what I mean. So I have this little tab. I point with my tweezers. This little tab here is... This one is flat. This one is flat as well. It's in reverse and I can't find it. There we go. That one's flat as well. So that when you put the card flat, like so, it will lie flat. So in there, it's per perfectly flat. When you want to give a 3D card, it's got that little bit of a hinge to it. Okay. Now, I'm going to do exactly the same. They must face exactly the same way. So the piece that went downwards has got to be downwards on that same side again. We have one on the back side. We now need one on the front side. So I'm going to have that still hooked under. So that's, but that piece is going to be hooked under. And then this piece will be flat. Okay, and I will put this in from the back here. Okay. So now I've got those in there. I've not cut the video, but you can see they're two different heights. So one's going one way and one is going the other way. But they're both facing the same way. So where the tab is folded over, they're both kinked over at the same side. So when we flatten that card, I'll try and catch it on the camera. So when I flatten that card, everything goes nice and flat. Okay. When it gets the other end and you want to bounce it up, it has a bit of give in there. So it has those two hinges that are just holding that across on those bars. Okay, and they are slightly different heights. So one is there and one's there. It's really difficult to explain. So I hope you get what I'm talking about. Okay, so the next step, we have a piece of greenery. I have cut one of our bows from the Peaceful Bows dies. Now I found that this was too wide to go in here. So, and it's not gonna be seen down the bottom. So I'm going to snip this branch here off okay and a little bit of the stem we don't need it that long okay but otherwise that is going to fit nicely we're just going to attach just the stalk here to one of those strips going across okay so I'm going to do that now Okay, so once it's closed and flat, it's going to sit out here. But once it bounces up, it's going to be 3D. Can you see that? So it's actually a 3D piece of foliage. And all that's attaching is onto the, the strip underneath. Okay, so that's there. So then we're going to put the two baubles that we've punched. I like to put these on 3D foam pads as well. So I will put one of these, um, I think I'll put it on this, this branch here. And I will attach one there so the branches are kind of like flowing round. So I will put the, because we want to position where we're going to put the 3D, I'm going to place a 3D pad on here, like so. And I will peel that off. 
and then pop the pop my bauble on there like so. Kind of look, the, the baubles are sitting in the tree. I'm just going to press that one on there, and that's all that's holding it. But the weight, the weight will give it that movement. The last one on here, I'm going to place a, a 3D dimensional on this corner and then put some adhesive on there so that, that will just catch that a little bit stronger. So I'll pop a little one this end. Like so. I'm going to bring back what I used on my last project and I had my Tombow here. So I'm just got on my silicon mat. I'm just going to put a little puddle of adhesive and I'm just going to tap that. Now I want to just put some on this side but I don't want it to be too heavy. So I'm just going to tap that on there rather than a big splodge. Okay, now I'm going to leave it lying down. This is going to fit partially on there and partially onto the, the uh, foliage here. So that's going to press down. So they are 3D. They are one is dimensional onto the other and that's dimensional onto the bow. And then this one, it's still going to fold flat, but peek through the card once it's flat to go in the envelope. Okay, so I hope you can see that. I'm just gonna move that so I don't put my fist in it. Okay, so there is our card finished. I'm going to add some Wink of Stella to the branches. Because these branches need some sparkle as well, I'm just gonna randomly put some Wink of Stella on the branches just to look like it's glistening in the snow. Okay, and there's some edges poking out here. So wherever they're poking out, just gonna pop some Wink of Stella on those branches. And if you can see down there, then I'll just put some on there as well. Okay, just touches just to add the glistening snow on it. Okay, now I didn't do this for my photos, but I will, I think it could do with some gems on there as well. Now I have the beautiful champagne rhinestones here. And I think I'd like to put one because this is quite a plain surface here. I think I'd like to put one in each of the corners. So I'm going to use the medium size ones and I'm going to put one on this corner and one on this corner. Kind of a symmetrical girl. So just to give it a little bit of bling, just to add some corners on there. And there we go. Oops. Odd. Okay, so you've got those little hinges. The camera angle isn't isn't very favorable but you can see how it works and it's just pivoted on those sides it's just wobbling on there but it's anchored securely because the hinge underneath is catching it okay so i really liked doing this it was a first attempt on this one and i'm just going to bring you in my other color so here is the other one that i've done in the peacock again with the same same paper suite i didn't put anything on here because these papers were continued down and they were busier but you see what I mean with regards to the one direction. When you have the baubles upright, you need to cut your card, even if you have to cut two pieces to get it perfect, you're gonna have those lined up. And this one didn't have any Wink of Stella on his branches, so I'm just gonna to touch that over now. Just add, just something like the snow glistening. Okay, there we go, just some little taps on there, like so. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today. Uh, if this is your first visit, then please click on the subscribe button below. And if you ring the bell too, you'll be notified of any future videos as I release them. My contact details will all be at the end of the video and in the description below. So thanks again for joining me today. I hope to see you here again soon. Bye for now.